Hey there, how's it going everybody? So welcome back to our second episode of the Learning Survey 123 Connect uh, tutorial. So as you can as you have, as I've mentioned in the previous tutorial, we're going to be creating a living conditions health survey form is going to be filled out uh, in order to advance healthcare services uh, within any region. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna open uh, my survey 123 uh, connect app which I have pinned onto my uh, Yep, which I've pinned onto my taskbar and then I'm going to go over the steps of creating a basic form for now and then we're going to move on to the advanced features in another episode so okay so I've launched my uh, so I've launched my survey 123 connect app and by default it uh, logs in all the apps that I've created within my uh, within my application so now I'm going to create a new survey the survey that I created before is right here and uh, I can basically delete it, but no, it's actually still working online, so I'm not gonna delete this one. So I'm just gonna create a new survey now. And then, what I'm going to be using for the survey is I'm going to be using the advanced tablet. We have uh, we have also the standard tablet, but it's also advisable to use the advanced one because it contains all the fields that are required when doing this. You can also grab our uh, samples surveys. Which are online, which have been uh, made by uh, which have been made by Agis Survey One Two Team, or you can grab uh, forms from the community, which have been uh, created by people from the community. And uh, yeah, if you have service within your organization, you can also get service from your organization. As you can see, I also have service which are within my organization. Okay, so let's just go back to templates, and then I select on the advanced one, and then I just give this a name. So I'm just gonna name this uh, living conditions, oops, living conditions, survey. But unfortunately, as you can see, this unique name are uh, required. So I already have a survey. His name is this. I'm just gonna name this one uh, to tutorial, and automatically the table name will be named living conditions survey using underscores. So this is going to be the name of the table. And once I create survey, it's basically going to Create a table and uh, and an Excel file, which I'm going to be editing in order for me to be able to create this app. So let's just leave the machine to do that while we are preparing on the next steps. Okay, as you can see, automatically it opens Microsoft Excel, which I said uh, is basically used for editing these templates. And as you can see, we have a default uh, question within our Microsoft Excel. As you can see, this is the question. It's written text and then example text question and then we have a select yes or no question if i go over to my app we see that these are the fields which are currently here and uh yeah we're going to be removing this because we do not need these ones so let me just allow me to delete these ones and then i'm just going to start over here okay so let me just skip a line here because i'm going to need this line later so let me start on the third row okay so i'm just going to start by uh adding a family name okay unfortunately i didn't uh, open uh like a fields but i'm going to include like the fields which i'm going to be using for this tutorial in the description below i should have done that before i created this tutorial but anyway for time's sake let me just uh, go over with you that okay, so first of all we need to to collect like the date on which the survey was conducted okay so let me just put in the date uh item here so as you can see we have uh, a drop down here which helps us to pick the field type which you want to use okay so since i want to put the date it's obviously i have to put this date type here and then i just basically need to name my field so i'm just going to name it uh that that time but i actually need the time component so let me look for the dead time okay yeah this is the dead time and then i'm just going to label it and then i'm just going to say that uh, okay. so current that and the time this is going to be the display feed and uh, I want this to be automatic so it's basically going to be read only if I scroll over to read only I find another drop down so I'm just going to say yes it's going to be read only the user is not supposed to not supposed to edit this field so if I am to save this just uh, try to control s and then I go back to my field. I find that it's not converting the XLS form. So every time you save uh, a survey, it basically starts to render in your changes and they get displayed here. 
okay so i'm not sure what happened why it's not displaying my date uh, and time feed i probably uh, left out a few things there but anyway let me just uh fix that later on okay so let me just go back to the form okay so in our form now right now we need to add uh, a section whereby we can fill in like the family name uh the dependent's first name so the, the respondent's first name the residential type and the location so these are the basic fields which we want to concentrate on on this tutorial and we're going to be moving on to advanced features later on during the tutorial okay so so first of all i want to fill in like a family name this is basically going to be text so i'm just going to select uh, the text field here so i'm going to select a text field here and then always make sure that uh, whatever name you're going to give your items these are going to be used like as the variables so remember when you're creating uh, an ArcGIS feature layer it asks you for a label which is going to be displayed to the user which is user friendly and then it asks you for a name which is going to be defined as the variable like as the column name which you're going to be calling whenever you're going to be using any mathematical functions or any programming languages so here it has does not have to contain any spaces or any funny funny characters okay so since this is going to be the family name i normally like uh, starting my variables with a small letter and then put a capital letter like that and then here i'm just gonna type in family name which the name is going to be displayed to the user and i don't basically need anything here okay so i think i just figured out why our date and time feed did not display remember here it's actually blank simply because we didn't define a default field so let me just navigate over to this default section here this default section uh, it uh, prefuse like the field with a default value so in order for us to get a default date and time which is going to be actually our current date and time all we need to do is we need to type now call in the now function and then put some empty parentheses there and then it's basically going to render that okay so let's just move on to uh, the next article now we need to put the respondent's first name so that's also going to be text again and then now we just basically say uh okay usually a first name is also like uh, yeah first name is uh yeah the name that we used to call the person so let me just type in first here and then i say name and then here I'm just gonna say I'm gonna type in respondents first uh, oops first name like that and then yeah you can also put hints within your within your phone that actually tell people what to do whenever they get lost for example uh, on the respondents first name or on the let me just say family name I can also put a hint that uh, this is also the surname the surname of the person you are uh, interviewing interviewing okay like that so this hint actually helps the person who's going to be operating the mobile device or the computer is going to be used to collect this data okay so now we're going to be picking up a residential type so a residential type normally it's going to be uh, a select one field where we are going to be selecting just one option from a list of values so i'm just going to say select one here then i'm going to name this list i'm going to give it a name so here it's preferred with the list name we're supposed to give it a name here so let me just give it a name uh, i'm just going to say res type like that and then i give it an, a variable here so I'm just going to say residential type, uh, okay, I like putting small letters first, I forgot about that. So residential type, and then I'm just going to put uh, here residential type again. And then, yeah. so since this is going to be a select one field, which basically means we need to put in a list of values, which is going to be selected by the user. In order for, do, for us to do that, navigate to the workbook which is written choices here so we just click on choices and then we pay okay so remember when we started this tutorial 
we had uh, some default data which was within our survey workbook and we got to delete that data so here I'm just going to clear out this rating data and remove it because we basically do not need it for now so let me just uh, delete that and here you find we have a column which is named a list name so when we remember we actually renamed this let me just show you one more time uh, it was like this right and then it was written list name and then we actually renamed this to some variable which we wanted uh, okay, so let me just clear that out so since we named this to rest type we go over to our choices uh, field and then we need to type res type in there and then we need to give it we need to give remember we're going to be uh, allowing the user to select like, the type of residence in which they live in so basically we have uh, let me just type them out we have low density we have low density we have high density and then we have medium density okay, don't worry about the ordering there i think i have uh, misplaced ordering but still okay so now these are the choices which are going to be selected by the user so now the list name is also supposed to be carried forward over to these names and then this is going to be like the name which can be used uh, if you're going to be you know, using any programming languages you know, so these are basically just going to be uh, like the variables and then here we're going to be putting like the labels which are going to be human friendly text so you can type in low density there and then a place in high density and then it's just going to say medium density like that so if you also have images in which the user can select from you can basically put the image uh, link here then that can also help to do the survey okay so let's move on to the next section whereby we're going to be adding the, now the location component so now we're going to be adding on the location component so we just go back to the survey workbook and then now we need to select a new field which we're going to be defining here but first of all i'm just going to show you what our form looks like remember we altered now the date and time field and uh put this read only function and then we also put our uh, this default now uh function so we're just going to show you just control s and then i go over to my form now converting xls form so it's basically getting uh it's basically getting the values from the excel file and transforming it into xls language and then bring it back to the ArcGIS Connect application. So now you can see the date and time field are previewed with the default date and time. Today is 17 June when I made this tutorial, it was at 17.23. These also the time is displayed on my machine here. And then these fields can now be viewed and the user can also get to select uh, one option from these residential types. Okay, so now let's go on to adding uh, like a location component to our phone so basically a location component you can either put uh, polygons or points uh, unfortunately ArcGIS uh, survey 1 to 3 does not support uh, line features as of now but hopefully in future videos it's going to be able to support that so on our type field here we have to look for the type name uh, geo point so let me just look for a geo point this one and then so basically the geo point is going to be like a point which uh, is going to be uh, representing a specific location of the user location. So here I'm just going to name it uh, location. And then on the label, I'm just going to say uh, uh, location. And then uh, I'm just going to say uh, any hints. No, I don't think I'm going to add any hints here. Uh, I don't really need any hints for now. So if I'm going to save this, Control S and then I go over to my phone there. It should be able to transform and produce something which was required for this tutorial. See, it's not optimizing the survey, and uh, we now have a new field which has been added down there. And we can see that I, it was loading a map, and then it basically located my uh, like my like my current location right now. Uh, yeah, so this is my current location. I also have the privilege to be able to click elsewhere or Yeah, I also have the privilege to be able to click or drag this location component elsewhere in case uh, my, my 
like in case the accuracy or my GPS is kind of biased yeah so I can just place in my location anywhere where I want to put it or I just leave it up to the computer or my mobile device to, to geolocate me automatically okay so this is the first step of the tutorial that we learn through but first uh, before I move on to the like first before we move on to the third episode of this tutorial as you can see here we have a survey title not set which is not uh, actually good for our survey so I'm just gonna basically change this title and put something else which is going to be presentable for the users to know what this sub is all about so in order for us to change this survey title we need to go back to our excel file so uh, I think in the first tutorial I mentioned that we are mainly going to be dealing with these three workbooks as you can see they are already in green which means that the food books which are going to be working with so in order for us to get the title of the survey we are basically going to be using this settings workbook as you can see this is where it's getting the title from it's already written survey title not set so I'm just gonna say um, living conditions living conditions conditions uh, survey tutorial so that's basically going to be the title of the survey just control s to save that form now it's converting to xls format and i'm pretty sure if you look over here the title is going to change once it finish it finishes optimizing the survey okay so it's now named living conditions survey which is basically what i wanted so uh before i go again we also have like quite a lot of features here as you see uh like these uh like these blue fields here we have uh, a field which basically helps you to know whether the, whether the field type or the question type that you want to use is supported uh, within the field app or the web app. We also have like an appearance which can be used, uh, which can be used, and that uh, like in the description to also know if uh, it's supported in the field app or the web app. We also have field types here, which also can which can also be used. And we have references which can be referred to. So remember, we used now function. So on the now function, this applies to time and date questions. Set the default to the current date and time. So this is basically everything that you need. You always reference to these things, and uh, hopefully you guys can advance more uh, in the tutorial by creating your own surveys using this tool. So this tool is actually uh, different from creating these surveys online you find that online we don't have a uh, like present logic that helps you create like um like uh that helps you create a competing service which can be used and which are not uh we are not redundant this survey uh this survey one to connect app helps you create those surveys so in the next episode we're going to be focusing on creating uh some basic logic within our survey we're also going to be adding a, a signature and we're also going to be grouping our survey based on what we saw on the first episode. So uh, please stay tuned for more videos which are going to be coming in the next few days. And uh, we're going to be learning how to create uh, computing surveys which are user friendly and which are not redundant. So if you like this video, please share with your friends, family and colleagues. And also don't forget to subscribe to this channel in order for us to keep uh, creating more videos. See you guys in the next tutorial.